Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk about making your own custom iconography and simple freehand. We're here today in my D&D room. This is my D&D table below you. These are some of the books. But we're here because this is whiteboard. And we're going to use that today when we talk about creating your own custom symbols and icons for your armies. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Now, one of the great things about wargaming is that when you get these little plastic toys, this is your world. You're the creator. You can do whatever you want. Paint them however you want. Make them your imagination brought to life. And certainly we can do our painting in the style of what it says on the box. And if we buy a space marine, we can make it a blood angel or a dark angel or some other kind of angel, because I guess that's what they all are. You can use an existing thing or you can make your own. If you've got those space marines, maybe you create your own chapter or legion or what's the name of a group of them? Oh yeah, a gaggle. You can create your own gaggle of space marines. That's the right word. And when you're creating that new army, that new symbol, you want to make something that's cool and fun, but yet it's really easily replicatable. Because let's be honest, if you're going to put that logo on 50 different Space Marine shoulder pads, or 40 different Stormcast shields, or whatever, whatever the, uh, whatever the army you happen to be painting is, you want it to be something that you can replicate over and over again. So today, I'm going to take you on my journey and how I created the custom symbol for my new Ratcast army, and how I hope that can help you. And then I'll actually show you how I painted it, and how you can break down these simple freehands into something very repeatable. So, let's get into it. Our journey begins by looking into the past. Now, you could certainly sit down and just try to sketch things out of whole cloth, imagine some symbols into life. Maybe you're that creative. I'm really not. So I began my journey with the old Skaven heraldry book. I looked through that book because it had all the different clans and the different markings and iconography and banners that all of them used. It's a really cool book. I love it. It's a great resource. And I looked through that and found the symbols that I thought would be a neat part of a hybrid for my rat cast, which are redeemed Skaven, you know, brought back by Sigmar as Stormcast. Now they're good guys now, so it can't look too Skaven-y, but I had to find somewhere to start. Then I looked through all of the Stormcast symbols, and sadly, there's actually not as many here. Unlike the, uh, the Space Marines, their sort of 40k equivalent, there isn't a huge number of different symbols. So I looked and looked and found a couple that were interesting. So now the next part is, let's see if we can create something and slam them together. My first thought was, well, let's take an anvil, which is kind of a classic Stormcast thing, and just put the Skaven logo over top of it. Makes sense, right? The Skaven on the anvil. So I kind of drew that out. I said, okay, let's take the basic anvil shape of, uh, that you see on the Stormcast, something like that. Let's just put the Skaven logo over top of it. But when I looked at that, I didn't love it. It seemed hard to repeat. It seemed like there wasn't enough shape there. There wasn't enough to really grab onto to think like, well, what color am I gonna make this? How is this part gonna stand out from this? It just didn't pop enough. It didn't feel right. So I thought, okay. Well, lightning bolts, those are a storm cast thing, right? And Skaven traditionally would use the sort of diamond pattern. So they'd have like this diamond pattern shape. I thought maybe we can do like some lightning bolts coming down here. And I was like, no, that just looks like a goofy alien head. That doesn't work. That's that's a non-starter. That's not going to fly. So I kept thinking about it, and I tried other little ones, like, well, maybe we can take the larger Skaven pattern, which is like this sort of diamond right here uh, that comes down, sorry, that comes down like that, and has a little like that, and kind of comes up, right? Maybe we can kind of... Now, that still feels too Skaven-y. There's not enough Stormcast in that, right? And then finally, I found the symbol for the old Stormcast shield. And the old Stormcast shield 
was effectively was this was on the circle shields and it was effectively a big circle with a little moon over top of it kind of thing like that and then it had this little lightning bolt thing coming down and little lightning bolts out the side so this is on like the um prosecutor shields with javelins or whatever and i thought now we've got something because if we put this and this together now we could have something right because if i combine these two well then let's replace the lightning bolt with this down arrow that's part of the skaven thing let's replace these little lightning bolts with maybe like skaven triangles And then let's fill out this little moon to make it longer and more angular. And now we've got a symbol, right? And what I can do is I can, you know, fill that in and shade it out and make it look like a cool circly thing. So it looks like a little globe. Thicken that up. We can shade all of these and so on and so forth. And it'll look cool. All right. So after all this experimentation, I found a drawing I like. And finding a drawing you like is good. Sketching it on something big if you've got a big whiteboard like this is great, but you don't have to do this. You can just do this on a piece of paper. As a point of fact, here's my little piece of paper that I sketched all my things on. Not that you can read that. But the idea here was test a lot of things out. Get a lot of ideas wrong. There's no bad ideas here in brainstorming. And once you find something that looks good, then with a pencil or a pen, draw it smaller and smaller and smaller on a piece of paper until you draw it in the proper scale for your iconography, be that a shoulder pad, a shield, whatever. So now that we've got it and we've got it broken down, let's talk about how we actually paint it on a model. So for that, we're gonna need to go over to the painting desk. See you there. The first step to painting any simple freehand is to break it down into the simplest constituent shapes you can. In this case, my symbol is based on a cross. There's a circle up top, there's a line that extends out of the bottom. I can base the whole thing on a cross. So I just do a little cross, and then around that, I build the circle. It's a lot easier to freehand a circle when you're just drawing the quarter sides in than when you're trying to freehand the whole thing all the way around. And spoiler alert, I still don't get it perfect, but that's fine. The next thing to keep in mind is you can see how when I sketch my initial lines, look how light they are. I'm just barely touching the brush to the shield. Now, I know that makes it wonderful. You can barely see what I'm doing. I apologize. There's just kind of no better way. I'm drawing super light lines, but that's just it. You want to draw these very light lines, put very little paint down because then it's easy to adjust. If you need to go back over it, if you need to use some of your original color to cover up a mistake, you can do so quite quickly and easily. Once I have that basic shape of the circle and the cross sketched out, then I just fill it all in. The next thing I do is I just reinforce the various shapes. So I need to fill everything out. The little tiny things like the little triangles, again, I break them down. I don't try to draw a whole triangle. I draw two lines to create the angle of the triangle. And then I just draw the little line at the bottom or fill them in. For the half moon at the top, same thing, a thin light touch line making sure to keep my brush on the surface for as long as I can. Now it's kind of difficult because of the angle of this thing, but try not to lift your brush constantly. You want to aim for a smooth light application. And then notice how to build out the volume, I just slowly push the edge up. See how I traced and pushed up a little, and pushed up a little more, and pushed up a little more, until I had it to the size I want. By building up freehand slowly like that, you, you run a much lower chance of messing something permanently up. <clears throat> the next thing I do here is outline all of this. Now, part of that for me is because this is going to end up being in uh, a sort of non-metallic steel. You'll see how I paint all that as we go. Uh, but I really wanted to, I always try to do a nice outline around it because it just makes it easier for your eye to recognize what's going on. You can cover some of the outline later as you paint, but getting a simple thin outline on there doesn't need to be perfect. It creates the borders of your freehand in a way your eye can recognize the same way the miniature itself has its borders. Now, 
when I'm doing these kinds of freehand symbols, I always like them to have some kind of depth to them. A lot of the symbols you get in transfers and stuff like that are sort of these monocolor flat things. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I could have stopped with just the outline and the symbol would have been perfectly fine. There's going to be multiple points here in this journey where you can jump off for your own army, depending on the amount of effort you want to put into it. But for me, I like to have this kind of variation. Now, a quick point, if you're going to do this sort of thing where you create variation in the freehand, the lighting of whatever you do in your freehand should match the lighting of your existing shape. So you see how I have the light at the sort of top, I don't know, it's called top right part of the shield sort of there. The lighting on the freehand should match that, even though there's nothing that needs to be the case about that. That is to say, um, you know, as a point of fact, the shield could have been held upside down and then it might have been lit in a, in a certain way. But the reason you want to do that is because if you're going to add contrast to the freehand, it needs to feel like it's in the same world as the shield. Like it's in the same lighting conditions and being exposed to the same light and shadow. As far as colors go, I'm using for this, by the way, I didn't do a paint list because it's just white deck tan and, uh, and Vallejo dark sea blue. That's it. There are three colors. Everything you see me do here is with these three colors. Uh, and just various mixes of all of them. It's it's This is a very futzy sort of process, as we talked about in recent videos. You're going to see me just do a lot of back and forth blending. And when you're working in small spaces like this with freehand, the key is, again, you're going to see where I sort of get it to a place where it looks pretty good. You want to stop there? Stop there. I probably spent about mm, 45 minutes to an hour on this shield, uh, on this freehand, that is to say. And that might be a lot for you, for your army. And I totally understand that. You could have stopped with the initial shapes and the sketch, you know, that was maybe five minutes. You can stop with some of these initial blends that I do the first time through. That was maybe another 10 on top of it. It's really all of this trying to get this perfect circular reflection that ends up taking time. I did want to sneak a little lesson about blending in here because I think this is a really good example of how you have to think about blending on these kinds of surfaces. This is a big flat surface effectively, and I'm trying to render a three dimensional globe. And when I'm doing so, you'll notice that I oftentimes put down a fair amount of paint and then go to a glaze. So when you like right there, I switched from a fairly decent amount of paint to a glaze, ran the glaze over, and then you saw me take the brush off the screen. That's because I was voiding the brush, uh, meaning I was eating the paint or wiping it off. You don't have to eat your paint. You can wipe it on a moist paper towel. And then I was feathering it out. And you'll see me do that over and over and over again. Glaze, feather the edge, glaze, feather the edge, glaze, feather the edge. When you're trying to achieve these really perfectly smooth blends, this is kind of one of the ways that you can do it and render something even on a perfectly flat space effectively. Now, one of the last things you want to do with your freehand when you've done all of the work filling things in, even if you didn't go for ultra high contrast like I did here, if you've painted in the area you outlined at all, you want to go back and very carefully retouch up your outlines. Because no matter how careful you are, you will end up accidentally painting outside the line at some point in time. Things will get rough. You'll eat up a little bit of your initial line and it will look rough and messy. A smooth outline like that is going to really go a long way to selling the crispness, the cleanness of your freehand. So that final step of going around and re-outlining everything goes a long way. Here you see me just doing the final touch-ups. Once I have the outline re-established, I want to make sure all of my highlights, all of the sides that I want as bright as possible, have more or less that pure uh, white on them, just as a very thin edge. Now there's one more really cool trick you can do when you're painting freehand like this, especially these sorts of non-metallic effects. Non-metallic, when you're rendering it purely on a miniature, is tough because it can't glint. You only can paint the space of the miniature. I can't paint the air around the miniature, as we often see with lens flares and things. But on, the, on a freehand symbol like this, I can effectively, quote, paint the air. 
because I can carry the reflection off of the object I've rendered and into the negative space of the shield. And you see how I just make these little tiny scratchy lines just over and over again in different directions, switching it up. And what we're effectively going for is the J.J. Abrams lens flare. Lens flare. Just lots and lots of little tiny scratches, crisscross, 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 crisscross. And then eventually I just find a nice center line and draw it down. And there you go. There is our symbol all done. I've repeated this across lots of Skaven so far. I think it really comes out nice. It's a good combination in my mind of the Skaven and the Stormcast. I'm really happy with it. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. But as always, thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.